We're back talking golf on Tee Off with Jan Stevenson. As uh, we had a little bit of a break, our first break and our only break of the season. So uh, I, I know the PGA Tour doesn't consider it a break, but hey, as we said the last time we were on the air, Jared, uh, I just hope that I, I know it was probably an accident to schedule, but if they're going to keep yeah. this ridiculous format <clears throat> and they if they just put it every year in the same week of the draft, it would make a ton of sense. Yeah, full disclosure, I only watched the last like nine holes of that tournament on Sunday. Oh, that was more than was me. A, it was a pretty pathetic nine holes. Oh, did you catch the playoff hole at least? I did, yeah. I'm not sure I've seen a worse played hole on the PGA Tour than what uh, those guys – Put up there, you know, bad, bad drive, bad second shot, chunked chip. The fourth yeah, was... shot was okay, and then a missed missed five footer. Didn't even hit the hole. Pretty pathetic. Yeah, I mean, I kept checking. Like I, I would check like every day. I was checking to see where everybody was, and for the most part, I did not see Rory and Lowry like in the lead, like for like more than like five minutes yeah. until the end. It's like they just waited until the almost the very end to tie the lead. And then of course, and then just let you know a couple of guys that have no no right being on the same course with them uh, choke their way uh, to a uh, win for Rory and, and Shane Lowry. And what does that do? So do they do they still get like some points or something out of this? Yeah, I think I think they they split everything. So you know they get points wise half okay. of the paycheck and also half of the uh, FedEx Cup points. I don't think it does anything to the rankings though, right? I don't think. I don't think they touch that. Like the, the world rankings? Yeah, I wouldn't think that that would, because I don't. Yeah, I don't think so. Because I actually looked at the, uh, I looked at the rankings this week, and I looked at their, their individual players, and the, the event wasn't even under there. So yeah, they don't count good. those rankings. Good. Yeah, it is good. Mm-hmm. They shouldn't. I mean, if it wasn't for Rory and Lowry, my lord, I can't. Yeah. I couldn't believe every every day I was looking at it. That first page was like, who? What the hell is this? I mean. At least you would have thought that they would have been. Uh, what was it? Uh, Cantley and Shoffley were together. They were the biggest disappointments. Kalen, yeah, I mean they, they at least made the cut. Uh, Zale Torres and Tagal didn't even make the cut, which that was wow. only, that was my only bet. That was my only bet for the week. So you know they were out of it. That was another reason I didn't watch much. <laughs> wow. Yeah, my only bet was Taylor and Adwin. So at least I had. That good, that's right? why I kept checking. But yep. they never made a push. So. Yep. All right. Anyway, uh, that gave us a little bit of a time off. And of course, Jared, who works with the uh, uh, draft uh, sharks, uh, you can check out. As a matter of fact, that we have a link in the description of uh, the websites that you could check out. If you're a big fantasy football fan, uh, check out Jared's work. Um, and of course, uh, we do a lot of our lads here as well. So it was a big week for us uh, with the draft. So it was a perfect week. It really was. I mean, uh, it just uh, everything kind of worked out perfectly because all that, all, all the not having to worry about that stuff gave me all the extra time I needed to do draft stuff. So exactly, it was perfect. And now it's back to golf. And I looked at the schedule and I was like, wow. I mean, I think got to do something about this. It doesn't make any sense to me that you have, uh, you you have Masters signature, and then if a month later it's signature. Uh, PGA. I mean, that a lot of these players now. I th- after the major, I think it's a little bit more understandable. But there's mm-hmm. some players they don't want to play before a major, and it's almost like they're being forced into playing a major. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, isn't it, it's yeah. just strange that they because there's a lot of money on. There's a lot more money at stake, right? The week before at the Wells Fargo than the reason than there even is at the major. Even though we know the major is more important to these guys. <laughs> Right, and I know, at least as of last year, these guys could only were only allowed to skip one signature event. I think that's still a thing. So you know, even if they wanted to pass up on the opportunity for this, you know, big, big prize pool, they they can only do it once. Um, so is this the only yeah, one that's that has kind of back to back with a signature event? Let's see. I, th- I think this is the only time there's a no signature event this. leading into Memorial. The next week, U.S. Into- Open. And then the travelers. And then the, the travelers week. right after that. <laughs> there's, there's just. There's what the just, heck is that about? There's just too many signature events, there's, and there's nowhere to put. There's nowhere to put these things. Wow, what a three-week stretch. 
Signature event, U.S. Open yeah, uh, signature event. I'm not. I mean, I'm not. I'm not complaining. No. From a viewer and betting standpoint, it's awesome. Yeah, that's a, that's, that's a great three weeks. So you're gonna have to make a lot of big decisions with one and done. And of course, we'll talk more about that with this week's event. Even though this is, you know, definitely. Look, I mean, the good thing is, is even though normally, if this is like in the meat of the season, there's a lot of good events. This would be like, eh. But this gets a boost because it's coming off basically like a bye week. So it's like, oh, we didn't really have any golf last week, so anything is good. Uh, so I think that'll make things interesting this week, even though when the favorite of the event is Jordan Spieth with the season he's having, you know it's still uh, missing a lot of uh, premium players. So, all right. Um, have you? By the way, have you done anything with uh, the – because it's coming up now. We only have a couple weeks left. Uh, let me check out here because I'm going I'm gonna, to – have you done anything as far as the futures? With the PJ Championship, about my, uh, recently. Yeah, my my PJ card is uh, yeah, and nothing recently. I, I think I mentioned this after um, the Masters. I, I have I have three bets in for the PGA now. I have Bryson and Homa at thirty six to one, and I have Wyndham Clark at sixty to one. Um, so yeah, those are my three awesome. bets. I have in now. Wyndham Clark. Yeah, I'm that's, happy. That's a great happy one. about yeah, happy about all of those. Yeah, even even I think I mean, I tell you, I watched um, I watched a like a fifteen minute replay. It was every shot Rory hit on Sunday when he won here back in two thousand fourteen <laughs> or whatever. Just just to kind of you know get a get a feel for what the course Rory. looks like and plays like. Um, I, I think it's a I think it's a I think it's a bomber's course, as a lot of these PJs have been recently you know thinking about back to oak hill last year um so i think guys like wyndham clark guys like bryson dechambeau i think those are the types of players we're going to be looking at so I'm, I'm definitely happy with uh all three of those futures yeah there's it looks like i mean you would think... where did i see uh yeah where did i see sahith was that sahith way down yeah, like, he was, close yeah, to 100 six, 65 <laughs> to one i think uh yeah i'm gonna have to bet him the only thing is 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 he ready to win a big one that's the only right. thing 80 it's 80, 80 to 1. 80 to 1, yeah. That's, I'm not going to be able to resist that. <laughs> and uh, Cam Young in a Bombers course is 40 to 1. He's got, he's got, he's got to win something before. He's not, I don't think his first win is going to be a major, but maybe. You know, there's too many, you know, there's too many golfers with odds between, like, that, what, 18 and 30. It's like, come on, you got to get better odds than this. That's, yeah, that, that that's, why, that's why I generally say – you know, you don't get great values on futures. You, get, you can pick and choose. You know, again, like someone like Wyndham when he was for some reason at sixty to one. But generally, these odds are going to get better week of the tournament. Yeah, it, it, it's 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 kind of too late now. Yes, agreed. If you're going to do it, you needed to. I mean, it's uh, not, again like it's not too late for Sahith. I think if you want to bet Sahith, you know, eighty to one might be the best number you get on him. Definitely, I would agree with that one. Uh, what do I have for the PGA? Did I do any futures? No, I did the Open, the US. No, I did. Yeah, I've got. Uh, I just don't. I, I don't remember the odds. I have it though. At the early ones, I did were, I did Ustazen, and I think he was the only early one. So I'm happy with that because he's playing well on the Live Tour. Um, I think yeah, he's yeah. getting. What is he getting here? He's getting hundred to one. So you're still getting a hundred to one on new days, and so again, yeah, I think he's uh, he's doing really well on the live tour. All right, so that's PGA Championship. We're still a few weeks away from that. Um, next week, of course, uh, we've got a good one with Wells Fargo, but this week it is going to be the CJ Cup, at Byron Nelson. So the CJ Cup Byron Nelson event. No idea why they've why it's called the CJ Cup now, but I guess hey, sponsorship money. You would think that maybe if they've got C well CJ Cup, I don't know. You would think that I mean, wouldn't that make a perf? You would think that that, that would be a signature event at some time, because it wasn't those CJ Cups like the ones that were over in uh, what was it China or Japan? Where, where did they have those? China. I mean, I mean that's a uh, that's like an Asian company or something, isn't it? Okay, so then yeah, yeah I'm not sure. I mean this you know this this used to be sponsored by AT and T. Yeah, and I think they must have backed out. So. Just recently, just this year. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yep. There, yeah, for a long time. Okay, let's take a look at some of the stats that you're going to go with. 
So of course we've got the top ten in course history, as you can see on the in the red, on in the blue. Uh, this is uh, top ten on easy courses since the start of 2023, and then we're going to also throw in uh, top ten birdies or better gained since the start of 2023. So uh, why did you go with these specific stats? Yeah, so <clears throat> course history I'm not weighing hardly at all this week um for one they've only played at this course three years so we, you're only looking at three years instead of five two this is you know, this is just a very vanilla golf course easy you know it's, it's one of the five or so easiest courses they play on tour you're going to get a winning score probably in the mid 20s under par so so that's why we're looking at top 10 in easy courses and top 10 in birdies or better gain those you know they're kind of similar stats and we want guys that can go low um you see a lot of the same names popping up on both these lists, at least a few guys I see, you know, Tom, Tom Hoagie, who we'll definitely talk about pops up on, on both lists, but um, yeah. And you know, you, you, you need guys that can go low again, you know, someone like Will Zell Torres, who is definitely interesting at 22 to one, but this is just, you know, not the type of course he tends to play well on. There's a certain type of player that tends to do better on these, these courses where you just need to make a ton of birdies. Yeah. So uh, that's, that's a good tip off. Uh, regarding your picks to have Tom Hoagie in two of those categories. Um, matter of fact, I'll throw up the picks now for everybody to check out. There they are. Jared's picks in blue. My picks are in red. So we have 11 total picks going into this week's event. And uh, by the way, if you hang on till the end of the show, um, we, we got some Scotty Scheffler specials that we're going <laughs> to uh, discuss and uh, I'm going to ask uh, Jared to, to, to give me his um, give me his pick which which special he would take based on uh, obviously the odds and how much money that you would have to invest in uh, try to make some money because Scotty Scheffler who's not playing this week uh, because he's getting ready to win Wells Fargo and uh, the PGA <laughs> so he's yeah. got he's got to rest a little bit for a couple of weeks is that has that bait has that baby come yet? I don't think it's come yet. So I mean it's supposed to. All right. Hopefully, uh, you know, during one of these next two tournaments. Something has to stop him. <laughs> so yeah, that was crazy. Uh him winning the RBC and you know, it's like you know, he doesn't get off to a good start and you figure, yeah, okay, this is what's gonna happen. <laughs> and as soon as he got into contention, you just know no way. He's gonna win this again, isn't he? And then the most disappointing thing though was that he just it's like I don't know. It's like he just – there was nobody to contend for him. And I, I – uh, Yeah. It's like we're at a point now where it's like there's some really good players out there. Why won't somebody just contend with this guy? Yeah, I don't want to take anything away from Scotty because what he's doing is unbelievable. But yeah. I still think a lot of the dominance we've seen in the last you know four or five weeks now, it, it, it's a combination of him playing awesome but also no one else playing well, no one else stepping up on Sunday when they're in the mix like – you know, obviously, to to go on the run, Scotty is gone, and you kind of need both those things to come together, and 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 they have for him. Okay, so let's start uh, with the two favorites. Which see now, th 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 we see this all the time. You get into these events, these small these smaller events, the weaker fields, and so this is the thing that we've we've we've, we've talked about a lot over the years. Is talk is when you're looking at the when you're handicapping these events we tend to stay away from players who are not normally favorites and obviously see, see what Kim now Jordan has been the favorite years ago. He was the man hasn't been the man for a while. Um, and then see what Kim at right now at 16 to one. Look, I understand why people might be thinking of Steve Kim, and if you want to take Steve Kim and you're one and done, I think that's a solid choice. But I think you would agree yep. with me, Jared. That that's going to be um, uh, that's also going to be uh, you're going to have to really think about where you are in one and done because I don't think there's any doubt that Steve Kim is going to be the probably the most chosen player this week. For sure, and I think rightfully so. You think about you know how he shaped up for this tournament and the fact that it's, you know, not a huge prize pool. So you, you know, don't want to burn, I don't know, at least someone like Zal Torres. He, 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 I guess he's the only, Zal Torres is the only guy in the field where like, he's like a big enough name where you probably don't want to burn him at this level of event. But yeah, Cebu's going to be popular again, as he should be. I, I did, went through my research on Sunday night. He definitely popped up as a guy 
I was interested in betting this week, but you know, he would have had to, if he, if he was 25 to one, yeah, I would have, you know, pulled the trigger about 16s yep. just too, too short for me. Yeah. Cause it started the week. He was, he was around that range and that's the reason why I went with the other two at 25 to one, Norman and Scott, because I liked those guys. I told them all the same, but it was like, no way. I mean, I get these guys at 25 and see who's at 16. No, that's, that's a big sure. enough difference. Plus he's just not used to being in this spot. Uh, as a, he's almost a co-favorite of an event. And look, we, we get it. He's made all 11 cuts this year. Uh, nine of those are top 30s, but he only has one top 10 this year. So he it's not like he's been in the mix where he's looking. And, and he is the kind of guy that this is basically his MO. He, 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 he could do a lot of top 30s. He can do that kind of deal. But he does, no, he does not get into the top 10 a lot. When he does, sometimes he pulls off a win. So he's just that type of player, which is the reason why he's the 45th ranked player in the world. Um, but we know he's probably more like a top 30 player because that's all it's going to take when he does win, uh, which he might win, if not this week, this year. The other good thing is he was second here last year after two disappointing tries uh, the first two years here. He went 22 under par, uh, finishing second to Jason Day last year. So, um, And Spieth. Um, Keep this in mind now. Jordan Spieth, second last year along, uh, excuse me, second two years ago at 25 under par, ninth in the in the first year of this uh, on this golf course. So he has a combined uh, 43 under par in the two events. But this is the important thing. He has one top 25 in his last seven on the, on the season. His last two finishes are 39th in missed cut. And when you take a look at the two years that he played well here, well, in 2022, uh, he won the RBC, the event before. And then when he finished ninth, his two uh, previous uh, starts uh, were third and first. So he's compl- his game is completely different yeah. than the guy that played really well here in 2022 and 2021. Yeah, for sure. You know, Spieth talked, I think it was, it was either before the Masters or like during the Masters about like a wrist injury he's been dealing with um and it, you know it's definitely showed up in the numbers he's you're not really doing anything well including short game which is usually um you know one of his strong suits I, I, it sure seems like that the wrist injury is impacting his game so no no interest in, in speed at this number okay and then we've got day zalatoris uh adam scott's dropped down now to 22 to 1 um so we could talk about those three you mentioned zalatoris he's played here twice missed a cut once um, but his game, he, he showed life at the Masters. But other than that, his, the other three events, he hasn't done much. So that's the kind of reason why he hasn't played that great lately. He hasn't done much here. That combination, being a short number, that was easy for me to pass. But Day, uh, the only reason I didn't take Day was the same reason I didn't take Siwoo Kim. Because the odds were a little bit lower than the other guys. But I like Jason Day. If I, if I had him in one and done, I probably would take him this week. Uh, I don't care about back to back. It's already happened in this event with Cage Lee. Mm-hmm. So who's to say Jason can't win back to back? He's trending in the right direction on the season as well. But Adam Scott is in my picks, um, and he's played pretty well here in the two events, uh, uh, two previous years, including eighth last year at 19 under par. So he's got a combined 35 under par here, and he's coming in with back to back top 25. So yeah, out of this group. Again, I would I like Jason Day if I had him on one and done, but I might actually be taking Adam Scott because I do have him on one and done, and I can take him this week. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Day Day's a tough one for me. He always kind of breaks my brain because like the ball striking numbers never look good, and that's even been the case recently. You know, despite the fact that he came thirtieth at the Masters and eighteenth at Heritage, like he, he's lost strokes on approach um, in what five straight events now. But you know, he tends to do it with his short game and with his putting, so that's definitely possible. He does obviously have the win here. Adam Scott, like you said, good course history here. You know, Will Zell Torres is the one I came closest to betting in this range because I think he's just simply the best player. Mm-hmm. But again, I just Zale Torres has never really threatened to win a, a birdie fest like this where the score is going to be in the mid 20s. I just, I'd rather wait and, uh, you know, hopefully get the Zale Torres win next week or maybe at the PGA. All right. Yeah. It's sort of like, you know, it kind of reminds me of sort of like, like Colin Marikawa in a way. You know, he was, that's a guy that seems to really just rise to the top in big events. Yes. 
but at the regular yeah. events you don't really hear much from him um, for sure and uh th that's 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 a guy that matter of fact i put money on him i think last week on the pga i believe i don't remember what odds i got but i think they were decent enough they might have been like about 25 or 30 to one and i and i just said to myself the way colin mccarr is playing right now uh like let's say he does really well at the wells fargo again mm -hmm. uh I, I i could see his odds dropping in the teens uh in the pga so even though it was only like 25 that i got him at i still felt that was that was okay because uh, i think that he could go a lot lower than that at the pga but anyway that's Colin morikawa Okay, uh, then we got Jaeger Minwoo Lee mm -hmm. on Norin. Right now they're all twenty-five to one, and as you can see, I have Norin in my picks. I am considering him for one and done, but I'm probably not going to go with him. Uh, on uh, this is just—I don't think this is the time to take him because he's gotten cold. Uh, Jaeger, I just can't see Jaeger winning two 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 events in such a short period of time. Minwoo yeah. Lee missed a cut here last year in his only appearance. But Norin has made all nine cuts this year. Uh, seven of those are top 30s, one top 10, very similar to Siwoo Kim. Uh, and uh, don't forget, and, and we mentioned this before with him, in the fall, his last four fall events, two of them were a second-place finish and a third-place finish. So he was hot at the end of the year, and he's picked off this uh, year uh, without missing a cut. Also, he's played here twice, both top 25s, 35 under par combined. So that's the reason why I like him uh, out of this group. Yeah, Norin makes all the sense in the world. In this field, he is first in strokes gain total this year. He is first in, on easy courses, as we saw on that, on that uh, top 10 list. He's also first in this field on Texas courses. Oh. Um, so, Matt, he make, again, he makes all the sense. Can Maybe he I will take win? it for one and done. Yeah, I, I think he's a great play. I've, I, I used him already. I, I think it was uh, at Valero I used him. Oh. Uh, but yeah, the only question with Norton is can, can he win, right? Because he hasn't done it on the PGA Tour yet. But otherwise, That's crazy. he kind of checks all Isn't the boxes. It? Yeah, that he's it, it never is. won on the – he's 41, I believe. And he's never won on the PGA Tour. So, yeah, he's yep. overdue. That's for sure. Next up, let's go with Tom Kim at 28-1. to 1. Tom Hoagie and Sung J.M. Now, it's interesting that Kim and Im are in the same group here because they're both yeah. in the same boat when it comes to they've gotten off to slow starts uh, this year. Yeah. But now it looks like maybe they're starting to get going again because Im just won in Korea uh, mm -hmm. a couple of weeks ago, or last week, actually, just a couple of days ago. And he was coming off a 12th at the RBC, which was his best finish in a while. But he's never played here. Uh, Kim... He's played here twice, both top 35s, uh, but he's starting to also trend in the right direction. So I, I, I can't take them, but if you want to jump on one of these guys before yeah. maybe their odds drop again in a field like this, maybe this would be the right time to do it. Hoagie, though, uh, I'm not surprised you went with him. The only thing I was concerned with with Hoagie, who's made uh, 10 straight cuts with seven top 20s and two top 10s. This has got to be one of the best runs he's ever had in his career. The only yep. thing uh, was the fact that his odds, 20 to 1, it's okay, but it is kind of a little low for him. And also, he hasn't played well here. He, he doesn't have a top 15, but I can see why you're going with him. Yeah, I mean, I will say this is one of the least attractive betting boards of the season so far. Like, there was no one that really stuck out to me as being, like, a great value. Um, I'm going with Hoagie because he's he's number one in my model for the week. Um, just look at the last 36 rounds for these guys. Hoagie is first in this field in stroke skiing approach. He's second in this field in proximity from 200-plus yards, which we haven't talked about yet, but this is actually a long course. You're going to get a, a lot of long iron shots on this course. Hoagie is excellent at, the, at those. Um, he's second in birdies or better gained in the last 36 rounds. So this is a guy that can make a bunch of birdies. He, again, was fifth on our uh, top 10 on easy courses. And Hoagie is also a uh, TCU guy. He went to college at TCU, so he's definitely familiar with these Texas courses. Uh, so it's interesting now because, because this is important. You mentioned the easy courses stats and the birdies were better gain stats for Hoagie yep. that is in the top 10 on each. I, I don't remember. Did you, did you have any others that you just mentioned that weren't a part of those two? And the only reason I'm bringing uh, this up, just so yep. you know, is, is my point of this is, is that. If you say, well, since the start of, 
uh, let's say you say one of your stats is is in the last five years compared to the last year. Mm-hmm. And then you look at Hoagie and you say, well, Hoagie's good at these types of courses because, you know, of this and that. But then you have to look at also, well, how was he done on the golf course? If he hasn't done well on the golf course, then why would I care as much about stats that he's good at that you're supposed to be good at at this golf course, if you know what I'm saying? But that's why yeah. I was asking you, well, because two right. of those stats are within the last year, which is more acceptable, where, OK, that makes more sense. And I'm, I, I would I would I would match that OK with this. But you see what I'm saying? If it was the past three or four years, I probably wouldn't regard it too well. How, yeah, how, it's I mean, always tricky. Me. But I don't know how you would no, do it because well, uh, no, I, I no, care it's, how it's, how a golfer plays obviously on the golf course. Yeah, it's always tricky to know what timeline to look at. When I build my model, I I do longer term form and short term form. I kind of mix both of those and actually lean more towards short term form uh, most of the time. Um, yeah, again, I I'm not weighing course history much this week. I care more about just how guys have done on easier courses in general. That is, it just gives us a bigger sample, right? Than three years on one golf course. So, so sure. you know, when I say Tom Hoagie is, is is fifth best on easy courses, that's looking at strokes gain total on easy courses. So basically, how how these guys scored versus the field on easy courses. Hoagie's been you know fifth best in this field. And again, that's the start of 2023. So, um, so he's played here once since the start of 2023, and he finished 43rd. So that that's the only thing. So, but again, that's why. I, it is important, of course, because it it should say it should say that okay. Well, because for instance, Jason Day, his first two years here, missed the cut fifty first, but then he won. So exactly. it, eventually, if he's really good at those stats, he should be able to put it together on this course. So even though he exactly. doesn't hasn't shown it yet, okay. Yep. Um. Next up, let's go with we've got one of your picks, Keith Mitchell. Shank, they're both thirty-five to one. Uh, Dietrich and Hughes are next at forty to one, and uh, that's when I have my pick. So we've got three of our picks here. Shank, I'm surprised he's thirty-five to one. He is not exactly yeah. playing well, and I don't even, uh, I, I don't, and he hasn't shown anything here. So I, I don't know what that's about. But you're going with Mitchell, so we'll start with that one. Uh, Mitchell has played here yeah. twice. Uh, his best finish was twenty-sixth, but. He's still playing well this year. He's got seven top 30s in his last 11 with a couple top 10s. Yeah, back on Keith Mitchell, I said after uh, Valspar, I was never going to bet him again. And here I am a month later <laughs> betting Keith Mitchell. But, um, you know, short short memory, I guess. He Mitchell continues to hit it really well. Um, in this field, he is sixth in strokes gain total so far this year. He's second best off the tee third best on approach, seventh best on those iron shots from 200 plus yards. Uh, Mitchell's 12th best and birdies are better gained. Um, so again, just checks a lot of the boxes. I think he's going to play well. Can he actually win on Sunday? I definitely have my concerns about that, but I, I, you can say that about pretty much anyone in this field. Yep. Um, and then a couple of my picks, uh, uh, Dietrich and Hughes. I really like Hughes. Hughes is another player that I'm looking at as a, as a one and done this week. Um, I like the fact that his odds haven't moved at all basically since the start. It was 45, now it's 40. Uh, missed the cut first time out, 14th last year, so nice jump. He's made five straight cuts, including a third. He's also made 12 of his last 13 cuts with three top 10s, two top fives, and a runner-up. Uh, this is his best run since the end of 21, uh, which was really the time that he just kind of broke out for the first time on the PGA Tour. He's got a new coach. The coach seems to be working out for him, which is no coincidence why he's playing better. So I think that Hughes is a really solid play here. And Dietrich, we don't have any stats on him at this event, of course. but um, And he was he was he actually finished eighth last week with his partner. I don't know who that was. Oh, it was McIntyre, I believe, right? Was it McIntyre? Yeah, yep, that's right. Um but he's got six top 30s in his last nine, two top fives in a runner-up. The last time we probably remember him, he was missing all those putts at the end in the Houston Open, I believe it was, against Scheffler, uh, when it looks like he, he really had a great chance of winning that one. And uh, But anyway, he does, he, he's been there really close a couple, of, a couple times this season, and I think in a field like this, this is a good opportunity to just take a stab at him. 
Yeah, I mean, Hughes and Dietrich are both excellent putters, and you're going to have to make a lot of putts to win this event because, again, you need those birdies. Um, Hughes, too, by the way, fifth best in this field in Texas. So I, I wouldn't have guessed okay. that he's played well on Texas courses. Yeah, it's interesting you say that with the putting because I remember I was, look, I was trying to take a look at some of the stats in this event last year to see if I noticed anything. And it's interesting because Jason Day, if you looked at all the stats across the line, he didn't really excel at anything except the best thing he excelled at was, which was he was the top 20 at was the putting matter of fact, the yeah. player that finished second to him. And I think it was that was Siwoo Kim had a really good mm-hmm. week of putting last year. So it, that, that's, that's, yeah. that's probably a good stat to follow is uh, maybe somebody that puts well, and, and maybe if they're putting well coming into this event as well. All right. Uh, For sure. Yep. McNeely Hubbard, Cage Lee, the two-time champ of 50 to one. I mean, taking Cage Lee to win three out of four. Good luck with that. Uh, <laughs> Hubbard, uh, he's interesting. You know, I, I was thinking of taking him this week. Why not? He had a good run last week, you know, with his partner. Uh, finished third. Uh, 29 under par in two events here. Uh, both top 35s. He's made all 11 cuts on the year. Um, so out of this, out of these three, to me, Hubbard's definitely the guy. McNeely, uh, he's still, I'm not sure whether or not he's 100%, to tell you the truth. So I need to see, uh, before I even think of taking Maverick again, I need to see him contending for a, for a win at some point. Yeah, Hubbard uh, just missed my final card. So did Doug Gim, who we're looking at on the screen now at 60-1. to 1. Those are kind of the last two guys off my card. Just both guys who are, are hitting it well. Um, just kind of, you know, fit, fit this course that both guys can, can make birdies, you know, they're both pretty good on easy courses. So those are two guys I looked at. Okay. And then, um, we got power <clears throat> at 55 to one. This is part of my picks. I, I like power this week for the obvious reason you were saying you couldn't find anybody that was playing well, like that's just really, really well. Well, it, it doesn't, they didn't have a bunch of top fives here, but I think he's got to be the guy that has been the most consistent here. In all three years, he has top 20s in every event. He's got one top 10. He's a combined 50 under par. He's coming off a 12th at the RBC. You had to give him some time. It came off the injury. You knew it was going to take him a little while to get going. Now he's starting to play well again. And I think getting 55 to 1 is is compared with the fact that he's a really good record here was a no-brainer for me. Yeah, and he, like you said, he he's playing – as well, if not better than his results would uh, suggest recently, he's gained strokes on approach in five straight, which is, I'm looking through his longest streak in a while. Um, so he's coming in in good form at a course he likes. So it definitely makes sense. All right. And yeah, by the way, speaking of Doug Gim, uh, his game uh, did kind of, he was on a nice run there. But he kind of cooled off for a little bit. So it'd be nice to see if he can get going again and maybe the next time and then feel like this, it might not be a bad take. All right, now uh, Justin Lauer uh, and Chan Kim are part of our picks. Who would have thought that? Mm, But Justin Lauer, uh, who, uh, matter of fact, uh, was he in contention last week or did did he have a good run last week? Who was he playing with last week? I think, again, I I wasn't paying. Yeah, I I could have sworn. I I don't know if he he had a. He wasn't in the top 10, but he might have been right outside outside of that because I could have swore I saw his name up there with his partner, but, uh, he's trending in the right direction. I believe his fourth place finish might've been at Punta Cana, maybe. So he's coming off uh, a really good result his last time out. Yeah. Fourth at Punta Cana last time out. He also, he also came third at the Mexico open earlier this year. I think that's a really good comparison for this event. I think they're very similar, you know, wide open, long, but easy golf courses. I, you know, the last guy on my betting card also played well at Mexico. So that was definitely something I looked at. But yeah, I mean, Lauer has just had a good season. He's fifth in this field in strokes gain total this year. That includes 18th best on approach. He's another guy, um, 17th best on easy courses. So didn't quite make the top 10, but was close to it. Um, so he just makes a lot of sense to me as a guy who's playing well, that should be a good fit on this course. Let's see. So overall, uh, he has really just been full time since 2018, and he hasn't yet gotten into the hundreds. So he, like you said, this is without a doubt the best year he's having. 
because the best previous sure. world ranking at the end of the year were the last two years when he was 218 and 215. So now he's at 132. So he's definitely uh, making a move. All right. Uh, and I'm going with Chan Kim. And, you know, if, 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 and I know we haven't talked about Chan Kim much, if at all, on, on this program, but uh, this is a guy that clearly would, if he was able to win, it would be really good for the tour. You know, he's got a great personality. Um, these are the types, these are the types of guys you want to see in press conferences if they're in contention, if he can get a win and show that he's a top 50 player, say. Um, but it, this, if you take a look at it, uh, look, he's never played here, but he's made eight straight cuts with a couple of top tens. He's trending perfectly, um, uh, including 14th and 6th his last two. Keep in mind, he's won eight times on the Japanese tour. He won twice on the KFT tour last year. He finished second in the point standings on the KFT tour last year. And that is what got him his P. He is a PGA tour rookie. And I believe he is only 33. Actually, not only. I should say he's 33 years old as a PGA tour rookie. And as a bonus, he's South Korean. So we know how the South <laughs> Koreans seem to really like playing at this event. So, yeah, I thought Chad Kim, if I was ever going to take him, I thought this was a good week to do it. Yeah, it makes sense. Like you said, playing well. Um, he is 12th best on easy courses. He, and wow. Chan Kim also came 8th at the Mexico Open. Okay, so good. I like it. I like like it. it. And uh, another one of your players is in here, Peter Kust. And uh, what do you Quest. like about Peter? Peter Quest. Quest. Well, Peter, what do you like Peter about Quest. Peter Quest? Yeah, no, no. Yeah, definitely my first time betting uh, Peter Quest, but uh, he just, just popped in the numbers for me, and I started digging into him, and I kind of liked what I was seeing, especially at this number here. Um, so 10th at Valero, 9th at Corrales in his last two starts. He is a bomber. He is one of the longest hitters in this field, which, again, is important here because it is a long golf course. Quest came 14th here last year in his uh, only appearance at this course, and then he is – Seventh best on easy courses, and he is fifth best on Texas courses. So again, just you know, d does a lot of things that I'm, I'm looking for in a in a you know, potential winner this week. And uh, this is actually uh, going to be his first full time uh, uh, on the PJ Tour. So he's a, right. I guess he's yep. another PJ Tour rookie. So yep. Um, right now he is at 169. He ended the year last year at 233. So uh, a couple of players there that you're going with long shots that are having the best years uh, on tour. Uh, another player that's in this group that, uh, again, I just think at some point he's – it's and this might not be a bad field to do it. Chances are he's probably going to do it in the fall, and that's Matty Schmid, uh, who just continues to play solid golf. He's made the last six cuts, um, and that includes 10th, 11th, 17th, 21st, and 26th. But unfortunately, he missed a cut here last year. I, I, so maybe I'll take a look at him in a couple of years. Um, yeah. Elsewhere, let's see. C.T. Pan I was kind of thinking about because he was really good here last year, finishing fourth at 21 under par. But he's got four straight missed cuts coming in here. Actually, four missed cuts before the fourth. And I think that's important because when I looked at how he was playing coming into this one, he's made – all five of his cuts, including a third of Mexico, just like you were talking about. So there you go. if you think C.T. Pan, who was fourth last year, coming in with four missed cuts, you know, was out of nowhere. Well, this may not be a bad idea. I didn't take him, but I yeah. just thought it could be interesting. And uh, is he also South Korean? Or what is C.T. Pan? I think he is, right? Uh, I couldn't tell you, honestly. I don't think he's South Korean. Japanese? I can look it up. But the interesting thing about CT Pan is that um, he's 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 like one of the shortest hitters on tour. But um, like you said, he he did well here last year. He did well at Mexico Open. So you know, for, for some reason, he's uh, able to play well in these longer courses. CT Pan is from Taiwan. Taiwan. Okay. So another got guy. The Asian thing going for him. Yeah. Well, that 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 kind of counts in a way. I mean, you know, the Asians in general, uh, you would think that. Uh, it's just like saying if, if it's Americans like a certain uh, uh, style of play, we talk about this in Ryder yep. Cup all the time. Same thing with any, any other um, nationality. 
Uh, another player that I thought was interesting to keep an eye on is this kid, Toasty, Alejandro Toasty. Mm-hmm. He's 90 yep. to 1. Um, he's playing here for the first time. He's a guy that you're thinking maybe he's going to sort of break out with a nice uh, win. Um, what, he had a win last year, didn't he? Did he win in the fall, Toasty? I think he won on the Corn Ferry Tour. Oh, that's right. right? I don't that's think right. he has. Yeah, yes. he doesn't. Uh, yeah, see, he has. Yeah, he won once on the Corn Ferry Tour. He won a couple times on the Latin American Tour. Um, you know, he doesn't have a ton of PGA Tour starts yet, but um, you know, he obviously popped in Houston. I think he's a long hitter, a guy that can make birdies. So he, he's, he's someone I looked at. Yeah, he was second at Houston, so as you said. Uh, another player that might be interesting uh, who's a Texan is Ryan Palmer. Um, uh, where is Palmer on this board? Is he way down, Palmer? Where the heck is Palmer? Oh, yeah, there he is. He's 180 to 1. And that's because wow. Palmer is just a horse for a course. In his last two years yeah. here, he's finished 8th and 5th at 53 under par. And he's not playing well, but he, he does seem to uh, come up uh, and play his best in Texas, um, uh, which is a familiar territory for him. Yeah, I mean, he wasn't really playing that well heading into last or last year's event. And like you said, came came 8th, so... And then you also, as far as uh, the remaining picks that we have, uh, you have one more to go, and that is uh, Semi Valamaki, who is now 130 to 1. Yeah, this is totally the Mexico Open tie for me. You know, Valamaki was the one in that final group with Jake Knapp in Mexico, didn't quite get it done there, but um, I think, you know, how he played there could definitely translate to this golf course. Valamaki is one of the longest hitters in this field. He is ninth best in this field in proximity from 200 plus yards. So again, it should be a good course for him. You know, talented guy who, you know, has played mostly on the, the Euro tour so far, but I could definitely see him winning at some point on the PGA tour, especially in a uh, you know, lower end event like this where distance does matter. I think it's a, it's a good spot for him at a 130 to one. We'll take a shot. Hey, anyway, well, Pavon can win. Uh, and, and after not seeing him win much in the Europe in Europe, and then comes over yep. here and wins, then yeah, uh, Valamaki, who had just won uh, in Europe before coming over here, um, uh, why not? Uh, another player, as we round out the long shots, uh, some of these other guys, Bramlett, we know he could hit it. He's played here three times, two top twenties, one top ten, combined forty eight under par. Uh, let's see who else uh, was I uh, taking a look at. Um, uh, let's see, Pendrith, he can hit it. First time he's playing here. Um, he was 11th at Putacan a couple of weeks ago. Played last week was also 11th uh, with uh, whatever teammate he was playing with, which I'm sure he was probably Canadian. And mm-hmm. um, that, that Parker Cootie kid, I know you've talked mm-hmm. about him a, a few times. He was sixth yep. last time out at Putacana. And he played here last year, 64th. Um, otherwise, I thought he could have been interesting. Uh, Skins, that's David Skins' character, who has a 7th yeah. at Houston and a 4th at the Honda, the old Honda, which was two best finishes on the PGA Tour. Um, he had a KFT win last year, by the way. 38th year in 2022. I just figured I'd mention him because uh, we're in one of these fields, and he's another guy that has kind of come out of nowhere uh, a couple of times in these types of similar fields. Um, surprising that Daniel Berger has still not had any success yet this season. Um, yeah, it's only been it's only been a handful of events, right? I mean, yeah, I guess uh, I, remember, I remember him. Zawa Torres has made him look bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Will Will's just <laughs> a stud, so you can't all be Will. But yeah, I mean, yeah, Berger. It, it's funny, Berger's ball striking's been okay. He hasn't putted well, which he used to be an excellent putter. So I don't know if the injury has affected that, but. Um, Maybe just some of the, uh, yeah, yeah, it's, I think it's going to take some time. I think that's what it is. Um, some of the other longer shots I was looking at, again, I think you could scroll down the Mexico Open leaderboard and find guys who, you know, played well there. I think Andrew Novak is someone who played well there. Uh, he's someone to consider here. Um, my guy, my guy, Garrick Higo, I think um, this is a decent spot for him. He's a guy who's, you know, won a PGA Tour event. And then uh, Nick, Nick Dunlap, who, who, you know, won a couple months ago, um, and is obviously a talented young kid um you know he, he has pretty long odds for a field this week yeah it was just uh, seeing if i could see anything there from oh um and who is the other uh grayers great graceman graceman was fourth last week with his teammate 
uh, was seventh at the Houston Open not too long ago. That was his best finish on the PGA Tour. That was, uh, I believe, the only other player that I, I, I wanted to bring up uh, out of all the long shots. And uh, there are certainly a lot of them for this week's event. Okay, so um, actually, let me see here. I've got this Mexico Open. Let's pop this up. Um, so, yeah, you got Valamaki with second, Jaeger, Lauer, CT Pan with third. By the way, Patrick Rogers withdrew this week, so he's not playing. Uh, Robert McIntyre was sixth. He's playing this week. Doug Gim eighth. Chan Kim eighth. You've mentioned that. So, yeah, so those are some guys to, to keep in mind that were playing that finished in the top 10 uh, at Mexico. All right. Now, Scotty Scheffler. Let's uh, wrap up with uh, our one and dones and the Scotty Scheffler specials. Um, well, let's let's just do the one and dones then. So again, I, I'm going to probably go with um, my four finalists were Kim, Scott, Hughes, and Norin. I'm probably mm-hmm. not going to go with Kim. I'm, I'm leaning against it because I just think that too many people are going to take yeah. him, and I just don't like him as a co-favorite of an event. Mm-hmm. So I'm kind of leaning towards either – so it's between Scott Hughes and Norton. Let's just put it that way. I have no idea where I'm going to go. Where I lean today, it can always change. But those are my top three. What about you? Yeah, I'm with you where, like, I think Siwoo Kim is just, like, the best pick in a vacuum. But I do think he's going to be super popular. And, you know, I'm, I'm kind of middle of the pack now in one and done. So I do want to start to try to get a bit different. So I probably will go elsewhere. I think the two guys I'm considering – I guess the, I, I would love to use Norton, but I'm – pretty sure I already used him. So I, I think my top option is going to be Tom Hoagie, um, who I am betting, who, again, like I said, is number one in my model for the week, just continues to hit his irons. Awesome. Um, so I think Hoagie will be my lean for this week. Uh, let me see if I notice it on here. Yeah, I think if you took – you were thinking of taking him at Texas. You, I think you I took were, him at – what is it? The Texas uh, Open. Yeah. Valero, Texas yep. Open. Yeah, that must have been it. Because you were so thinking hoagie, of taking it. Hoagie it is. Okay. So you're going to, your you're, Hoagie's your top guy. I would say right now my top guy would be Hughes. Because I don't think a lot of people are going to take him. So he's a, he's a long shot, and I think no one's going to take him. Okay. So now let's go with uh, Scotty Shuffler specials. And mm-hmm. what we've got here, we've got five or six of them. So now. You've got 14 to 1 if he wins both the PGA and US Open, 18 to 1 if he wins the US Open and the Open uh, together, 20 to 1 if he wins the PGA and the Open Championship, 40 to 1 if he wins the remaining three <laughs> signature events. That's Wells Fargo, Memorial Traveler, 60 to 1 if he wins the Grand Slam, and 750 to 1 if he wins the Grand Slam and all three signature events. <laughs> He's not doing that. I don't care what any – forget that. It's not happening. Not even Tiger Woods <laughs> can do that. So um, so what do you think is a – because now look, again, if you'd have to put more money on the 14 to ones or less money on yeah. the, the – big. I have no problem giving him a shot for a grand slam. I just don't – I mean, I don't think we've seen a player this good looking this hot in a long time. And Grand Slam, look, records made to be broken. Somebody's going to get it again. If it, why not? So I, I might take a to, chance. I mean, at sixty to ones. Yeah, to me, it's not. Yeah, I know. I, yeah, I was. I, I wish was I doing, had more than I that. Was, well, yeah. well, no, well, I, I was. I was doing the math on these, and they're all assuming he has like between a twenty and thirty percent chance to win each of these tournaments, right? Like to win, to win two of them at 14 to one, you're saying it's like uh, something like a 25% chance. He's going to win both of them, um, which honestly is probably about, it feels about right at this point. The, the tricky part is like, you know, what kind of form is he going to be in, in two months or in, you know, three months for the open? Like sure. right, right now, it seems like he could definitely do it. If he continues to play like this, he could definitely do it. Um, I do think the open is going to be the toughest one for him to win just because, you know, he's not just not as familiar with those types of courses over there. And you even look at his um, history at the Open. I think he only has like one top ten. Yeah, at I the agree. Open so, far. so I think, and that's the trickiest one. Um, you know, if I was going to pick one of the others, I probably would just go with the PGA U.S. Open. The fourteen to one. one. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, if you're going to do that, you might as well just go for the Grand Slam at sixty to one. <laughs> well, what do you think is more likely? 
that he wins the three signature events or the Grand Slam. I mean, you know, the the odds say it's the three signature events pretty easily, and I would agree with that because the fields are smaller and you're not facing the live guys. So I, I think it's more likely he wins the three signature events, but again, that's only 40 to 1 versus 60 to 1 for the Grand Slam. Yes, and it should be, you know. I, yep. I, I So let's see. If he's 3 to because he's pretty much been 3 to 1, 4 to 1, so let's just say he's right. 350 to 1 on all three. So let's say you put a hundred bucks on him. Let's say a thousand dollars. Doesn't matter. Thousand bucks. No, let's just most most viewers. Let's say a hundred. So that's three fifty. That's all you win there. But now let's take the three fifty. All right, that we win uh, for the first major, and we put that all on him. And let's just say it's four to one. We'll round it out to the U.S. Open. So it's times four. Now we're at fourteen hundred. So now let's take the fourteen hundred and put it all on them at four to one to win the open championship. That is fifty six hundred bucks. Okay, so um, so that's how much you would do basically if you just if you had a hundred bucks on the first one and you take that the the winnings you make you put it on the U.S. Open winnings you make put it on the Open Championships so at fifty six hundred. So it's sixty to one. That means that you would have to, if you put a hundred bucks there, that's, a bit better. that's six thousand. Right. Yep. So, yeah, and now, you're only yeah. betting a hundred. Yeah, I mean, you're betting thing, a minute. Though. Gives you a, it is. is I mean, why it comes out the same. You a, right. Yeah, and I, betting them individually gives you a chance to, you know, you know, take take some money back off the table and kind of yes. You know, and when he gets hurt, stuff, there's some. Yeah, exa exactly. So his, his wife is pre his wife gives birth and he can't do the PGA Championship. Yep. Right. Exactly. So yeah. So yeah. So so bottom up. Yeah, that's the best way to do it. Yep. All right. So it should get fun here uh, with the oh, yeah. next couple of events. We've got Wells Fargo signature event, and we've got the PGA Championship after that, and then we'll have a few weeks uh, to get ready for back to back to back signature major signature so bottom line is in the next what two months we're gonna have three signatures and two majors yeah the uh the one and done pools are going to be decided over these next couple months now just a ton of money up for grabs in the next you know six seven events i'm i'm so pumped for the pga pga championship too val hollow looks like an awesome golf course i think it's gonna be super fun is it gonna be what do you think the winning score is gonna be you know, Rory won in I think it was in like the mid teens. So it's not it's not. It, it, of course, it all depends like how how they grow the rough up. I don't know what changes they've made to the course since it was there last. You know, they might have like tightened up the fairways. I'm not exactly sure. Um, you know, the the, P, the PGA Championship doesn't mind having winning scores that get into you know the double digits. It's the U.S. Open that usually wants them to be single digits. So I, I would guess you know it's going to be somewhere between like ten and ten and fifteen under, maybe something like that. Uh, by the way, don't forget, just before the playoffs begin, uh, we have the Olympics. So it's almost like mm -hmm. having another week off. Um, I mean, it's better. I will say that. It's definitely better. Yeah. I'm more interested in the Olympics sure. than I am at anything that goes on with, in New Orleans with that event. But um, it is still kind of, what are there only, you only have like, what, maybe 20 really good players in that event, Olympics? Yeah. Not even yeah. maybe 20. If that. Yeah, if that. Yeah. So, but, you know, at least it'll give you something. But that's just before the playoffs. So, all right. So that's going to wrap it up. Uh, Jared, appreciate it as always. I'm sure we'll be talking some fantasy football here. Uh, not on sure. this channel, of course. Uh, tee off uh, with, uh, with Jan Stevenson. Uh, please subscribe. Uh, share and like. Let us know if you have any comments regarding any players that we didn't talk about or anything at all regarding you know futures, major events that uh, you, you're interested possibly in going with. Live Tours playing again this week, and then they're going to be off for like a month. Uh, I think they have a, maybe a six-week break or a month to six weeks. So they've got uh, another event this week. John Rahm is the favorite again, and he has not yet won on the Live Tour. <laughs> So uh, that's kind of interesting. You would think he's overdue. I think he's five to one to win this week. So um, yeah, I was thinking of maybe doing like a, maybe if, if you do like a parlay with Rom 
and a play. See, I like some of these parlays where if you go, I would say you do Rom and a player you like this week. So let's say you don't like the odds with Siwoo Kim. Then you do Rom, Siwoo Kim, and Scheffler in a PJ Championship. Whew. Yeah. yeah. I'm sure it pays well. It should. So. <laughs> it's uh, better, yeah. Yeah. But again, you're getting Rom and Scheffler, which th- those uh, are very likely, you would think, uh, winning bets. And you throw in a player that yeah. you like this week, like Siwoo Kim or something like that. So you got to get I'll, creative. Yeah, I would. I would definitely like to see Rom play well because he's someone that can challenge, you know, Scheffler if he has his A game. He obviously didn't have it at the Masters, so hopefully he, he finds it before the PGA. And you know what? When you mentioned DeChambeau, the first thing I thought about was what happened last year to Brooks Kepka. Is that, hey, maybe he's going to follow the same path as Kepka. He plays Except, well yeah. Oh, yeah. at yeah. the uh, Masters, I, but doesn't win I, and comes back and wins. Yeah, if you if you just look through major champions in general – I think a lot of them played well at a major previously that year before winning, right? Like, so I, I definitely, I definitely like the guys that played well at the Masters to also play well at the PGA. Yeah, right now though, uh, Colin Morikawa sure seems like a possibility the way he's playing. So, and maybe uh, Mr. I mean, uh, Ludwig. Zell. Ludwig for sure. I mean, eighteen to one. You know, you're, you're paying for it. Zal, I mean, Zal Torres is going to be on my short list too. Um, just, you know, the, the, the Val Hall is the type of course you want to play Zal Torres at. I'd like to see him play better before that though. So, all right. Is yeah, that... top top 10 at the Masters. So. Yeah, I'd like to see him. I mean, this week, I think it's important for him to play well. Get a, get a top 10 this week. I know what you're saying as far as. We don't like him this week, but he still is talented enough. He should be in the top 10 or top 20 at the worst this week. We'll see. If not, then that worries me, but we'll see. All right. Anyway, uh, that'll wrap it up. Uh, We'll be back again next week to talk about a signature event, the Wells Fargo. It should be a lot of fun. Uh, Thanks for tuning in and enjoy. Uh, Best of luck, everybody.